ju it just looks super scary. I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it, but I think we need to capture this way. So I'm going to use my my instincts here and take th this way. Opponent's playing some great moves, though. I have to say, I'm quite impressed. And we're at that two and a half minute mark, so I'm going to start moving a little faster. So how do you win chess games at the 900 ELO level? We're about to find out. Let's go. Let's play e5, fighting for the center. Of course, if white attacks us, we are going to defend. Already white is thinking. That maybe concerns me a little bit. Because sometimes, they're not actually thinking. They're pulling up Stockfish in the other browser. But let's see what happens. Probably not a cheater. Count's been around for like two years, so... I guess they're just afraid of Peter Potzer. Great, great start to this video. All right, Bishop C4. Let's play Knight C6 and see if they go for a... Ch okay, here's the checkmate attempt. Easiest thing to do is block it. So I'm going to play Knight F6. Block the Queen from getting there. Knight to H3. So it appears white might want to be coming in here and attack this way. Uh, a couple of ways we could approach this. Number one is we could develop our bishop and get ready to castle. Castling adds the rook as a defender to that square. So that would be one way to deal with the threat. The other way would be to try to strike with d5. Now, if we do that right away, white has three pieces lined up there. I only have two. It doesn't look quite like the right approach. Although, if you look at it from the point of this is just a pawn sacrifice to get my bishop out, then maybe it makes more sense. And then also, I'm thinking about the move knight to d4 to try to encourage the queen just to go back where it came from, gain some space and time, and then continue developing and castling. I think I will go for that. We've seen this move a lot in this series when they bring out the queen. Knight to d4, it's just a good move. It gains some time, it centralizes your knight, puts pressure on c2, which is a pretty dangerous fork, and so why not play that and then continue with what I'm about to do? Okay, and so we did encourage a move which is less than ideal for white. Why? Because this pawn cannot come out, which means the bishop can't come out, which means a lot of white's pieces are going to be stuck for quite some time. So I'm very happy with that. And if we want, we could play d5. We have enough pieces now. Now, there might be a tactic at the end of that, c3, and our knight can't move. We lose our queen. So maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe just bringing out my bishop makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I think I will do that just so that if knight g5 happens, I'm ready to castle and add the defender to that pawn. Okay, so let's go bishop c5. Okay, so interesting move, and I probably should have actually looked at this a little bit more carefully. I remember I, I always say, you know, when you're playing as white, look for tactics, and that's what white's doing here. It looks like they're about to set up a, a nice little fork here and win back the piece. Now, it doesn't quite work, but to be completely honest with you guys, I didn't really calculate this until just now, but I see that after knight to e6, I can save my king, so I blocked the check, but I also defend my bishop. So it looks like I'm going to be fine. Although there is knight to g5, which is actually maybe white is going to get away with, with winning a pawn here. So good move by my opponent. I didn't see that. Um, but we'll start with knight to e6. And yeah, on knight g5, I think they actually will win. Well, maybe I can throw in the check actually. So maybe it's going to be a big trade. But um, I, I wasn't even paying attention. So that's, that's my mistake there. All right. So the knight is, of course, pinned. So it looks like we have to move our king. We could go here is what I'm thinking. And after this, if I recapture, I lose this with check. But what I can do is sacrifice it here first and then take this back. And I get my pawn back and then white's king is kind of exposed. So yeah, that looks like a pretty good option. So let's go king to e7. And after knight takes here, which is what I'm expecting, we'll actually sacrifice the bishop. Okay, so I'm going to lose the bishop anyway. I can't really save it because my queen's under attack. So I have to kind of deal with this, but then I lose the bishop. So I may as well throw it in with the check and then we recapture here. So we'll take that back pretty much against any move that white's going to play. So I'll pre-move pre that one. And one thing that I'm noticing is this F file I can probably use to attack white's king. So rook to F8 is looking like a pretty nice move. White also has to keep an eye out for these moves. Maybe queen to d4 check looks like a good move, because if I can get this trade, it fixes my pawn structure. Right now I have double isolated pawns, which is not ideal. But after this, everything would be fixed. 
Okay, so yeah, like I mentioned, Rook F8 looks like a decent move, but also Queen to D4. Um, so it's kind of a question of do I want to force the trade and, and fix my pawns, or do I want to play more aggressively and go for White's King? I'm thinking White's probably going to play like Bishop here. I could play H6, capture with the Rook. King's going to have to probably go back or go over. Looks decent, but I really don't love my pawns. It also blocks my bishop. I kind of don't like that. So I think I will play queen to d4 check. And after the trade, you know, go on with the game towards the end game. I think that just looks better to me. Um, only because this threat's kind of easy for, for white to do it. They bring the bishop out, they trade, they move their king, and I don't really have a great follow-up. Now, white doesn't have to take me, but if they go here, then I have the option of messing up their pawn structure and probably winning this, this pawn at the end of it. So I think they will take me. Oh, that's another move. But same problem. I'm going to take now and they lose their e4 pawn. So I don't think that's the greatest decision. Actually, in second thought, I have knight g4. I just noticed that. And it just wins the piece right away. That's even better than a queen trade. So there we go. Almost missed that one because I had my mind kind of set on just trading queens. But it's important to stay aware, right? Because if I wasn't paying attention, I would have easily missed basically just wins the game on the spot. White's in huge trouble now because of this bishop here. Okay, so king comes out. I'm definitely going to be taking this. The question is which way? I think I'll take with the queen. And yes, I'm going to lose my knight. But whenever the king runs that far forward and your queen's behind it, you can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be a checkmate. Now, the unfortunate thing is my bishop is locked out. So I'll have to make it work with basically my pawns and queen and rook over here. But I think we can do that starting with h5. And already you can see the king doesn't have any place to go. And there's a checkmate in two. So pretty straightforward. I do want to go back as soon as this game ends and talk about the mistake there where I missed the bishop sacrifice. Because I, I think I know why that happened and I want to explain it to you guys. All right. So there is the checkmate. Pretty cool checkmate with the two pawns. Let's just briefly go back and look. And I, actually, I do want to see the game review on this one because I don't think we did so great. Yeah, 80 accuracy. Wonder, mistake. That's right. Okay, let's take a look. So I'm not used to seeing this kind of move. Like most of the games that I play, if I were to ever play a move like knight d4, my opponents are going to play queen d1 like every time almost because they understand how it's usually not a good idea to block uh, this pawn from letting their bishop out. And so this is a, a configuration where the queen's sitting on d3 like this that I very rarely ever see. So I wasn't really thinking about this idea because a lot of times the queen's like back here. And when I think about it, I'm thinking about it from a standpoint of maybe the queen's going to come over to b3. So check, I take queen comes to b3. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on these things. If my bishop would have been on b4, I definitely would have been looking for that. But here... I just, it wasn't even on my radar. And so that's just kind of an example of how those tactics can pop up and you're unaware of the, of the piece configurations, right? This is one that I, ha I just haven't seen often. It's not that hard. I should still be able to see it. I'm just kind of explaining what happened. And then we got lucky that we had 96, which actually wasn't a good move. Interesting. What was I supposed to play here? According to the engine, I'm supposed to play D5, allow this, trade the bishop off, and then come in with the knight, and I have a crushing position. How about that? Wasn't even on my radar. This is an example of when you, you're too defensive in your thinking. All you can think about, you kind of have tunnel vision on, oh, there's a threat that I have to deal with. You don't even consider the option of, hey, what if I go on the offensive, right? What if I don't worry so much about losing the bishop, and I just attack? And it, it's very clear now at the end, like, look at this position. Look at these knights. And I guess the main idea is you're guaranteeing that you have a fork here, wherever the queen moves. Let's just say it goes over here. You're, you're guaranteed to have that. Knight f3 is even better. Even king to e6 is the move that's showing up here. Wow, just using your king to defend the center and, and open up for the rook. Pretty interesting position. Anyway, let's keep going so we don't get stuck on this game. But that was kind of uh, fascinating. All right. New 10 minutes. Okay, we're black again. Let's try e5 again. Knight to c6, we'll defend. Knight to c3. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll just, we'll go with the boring four knights for this game. So I was trying to think of something clever to play, but we'll just keep it simple right now. 
Okay, d3 by our opponent. They choose to go for the kind of passive approach. I think I will play d5 and just strike at the center. A lot of times if they play bishop b5 and pin this knight, I wouldn't really want to play this move because it would allow the knight to come in, taking advantage of the pin. But in this case, uh, when they you know do the passive move like that, I, I will just go for it. Okay, so they're taking my knight out of the game. I think I will take their knight out of the game, kind of counter pin the knight is controlling those squares. Now, if they take me, I probably will take with the pawn so that my queen stays guarding this. Otherwise, I'm going to be just losing a pawn, it looks like. So that's something that, um, you know, when I play bishop before, I have to understand that I am going to probably mess up my pawn structure going into that. I'm okay with it because it adds some dynamics to the position. It actually gives me the option to attack here if white castles, which can be tr pretty tricky, and, and sometimes I like to do that. So I'm okay with that. Looks like my opponent's actually going to be castling the other direction. But they did just step into uh, this. And so I have a nice move here, d4. And the knight can't move or I'm taking the queen. But if it doesn't move, I'm taking the knight. And I don't, yeah, I don't see how white can get out of that. So here we go. That's a free queen. Yes, there's a little bit of tension here, but it's really not a big deal. You can just recapture with the pawn, and we're just fine. Okay. So let's just play bishop e6, try to get rid of that knight, and probably just recapture here after they trade. All right, so c4. Um, we could trade, like I mentioned. Now, there's going to be a kind of annoying pawn there. It's not that big of a deal. I could still probably bring my knight in and start attacking stuff. I could also on passant. And the main difference is this kind of opens up the game, right? Opens up this diagonal, opens up this file a little bit more, whereas trading just like this kind of keeps it closed off. Since I have the queen and I am ahead, um, I think I will go ahead and on passant just to kind of open things up. That's probably going to benefit me more than my opponent. So that's kind of the logic that I was using. If it would have been a different situation, maybe I was behind, I had made a mistake and I was down a queen, probably wouldn't be opening up files and diagonals. I would be trying to keep it closed off as much as possible, maybe to shut down the effectiveness of the queen. Okay. So this square looks pretty nice. Queen to d4, knight to d4, knight to b4 to attack this weak pawn. All of these moves are looking pretty good. Maybe even just castling, getting my king out of the center. Even queen d7 and castling queen side. All are viable ideas. Um, I think I will play knight to b4 only because I don't really see a way for white to defend this. There's also a threat here. It just looks like a lot for white to deal with. I don't see a way. I'm not really worried about anything with, you know, a fork because the queen is already gone. And so I don't feel the urgency to castle immediately. I think I will take advantage of this threat while it's, it's here and while it's difficult for white to deal with. Okay, they castle, which gives me the option to take both of these pawns, which one do I want? Because this guy's kind of blocking in white's pieces, I think I'm going to take this one, actually. So I, I do have my bishop and my knight lined up there. And so, yeah, I will go ahead and take. Which way do I want to do it is the question. Probably doesn't matter. I guess I'll just take with the knight to force a trade. Okay, and yeah, we'll just go ahead and go forward with the trade. Okay, and now that we've done that, I think I will take this opportunity to go ahead and castle. And maybe a, a simple plan is to just start pushing this pawn. I already have a rook behind it, which means it can support the pawn all the way to becoming a queen. It's a pass pawn, so there's no white pawns that could stop it. And I don't really see any other obvious weaknesses to attack right away. Maybe you could argue bringing my queen up and over to try to threaten checkmate is a little better. But... um. Yeah, I, I just like the simplicity of this, and I think it's very difficult for, for white to stop that. Also, it kind of activates my rook in a sense. I have ideas like this that weren't there before. So a lot of things that I like about this plan. Okay, d4. Looks to me like it's a free pawn. Takes, takes, takes. I think I'll do that. And I am aware of the fact that I'm lining up with the rook, so there's a discovered attack here. This knight can basically move wherever it wants. I don't see any dangerous moves for that knight. Knight to f3, yeah, knight to b3. Doesn't really scare me, so I wasn't concerned about that. 
but I'm not going to make the mistake of taking the knight because I was paying attention to that rook, and I know I need to move my queen. So let's actually just probably just take this with check. There's bishop d3. Do I have any other moves that are better? Maybe over here, actually. Maybe we'll do this first and then take that. Yeah, let's, let's do that. So we'll take here first, and after bishop d3, then we'll come over here, pin the knight, and get ready to take the knight next move. And if white doesn't play bishop d3, then I'll just simply take the bishop this turn. Okay, they do. We'll go queen to b4, pinning the knight, double attacking. That White has no way to save that. We can also use this pawn if we want, but we don't need to. Okay, and like I've mentioned, uh, I think I will just go ahead and trade it off right away, winning the piece. Okay, I'm going to take this because the bishop can't take me because it's actually a double check. Okay, they, they understood it was over, but I was going to take here, double check, and yeah, I mean, not really much for, for white to do there. All right, let's play e4. Knight to f3, I think we'll play a Ponziani this game. Three. Tricky opening at this rating level. Okay, this is what a lot of players will do. Attack your pawn. Remember, we can ignore it. And the point is, we will push with d5 if they take it. d5. Okay, good, solid, you know, just kind of a principled move there from our opponent. Striking at the center, letting both their bishops out. I like I like that. Um, let's see, what do we want to do here? One idea that I have is taking... And whatever piece takes, we could play c4, d5. And notice what I'm doing is I'm gaining tempo every move. So we capture and we threaten the knight. So black basically has to take us. And then we attack a piece. Black basically has to move. And then we push and we attack a piece. Black's going to have to move. And at the end of all that, maybe I can take this pawn. So yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. You can see the importance of tempo, especially when there's lots of tension like this. If you can find moves that create very big threats, it really forces your opponent to play certain things. Now, one thing that I am thinking about is what about queen to e4? Because that's a check. And black kind of flips the switch where it's like, okay, I'm forcing you to do something now. So I do need to at least calculate this. But I think we can simply block maybe with either bishop, this bishop, and then we can follow it up with an attack on the queen. Now, the only issue is it does give black time to actually take me. So now I'm wondering, is that really the best plan? C4 check might be a strong move. And then they, they would actually take before I get time to push. So that's something that I kind of overlooked in my initial um, analysis. And I'm, I'm debating, let's see. I don't think I actually want to allow that to happen. We could take... Hey, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's just a big trade. It might actually be fine. It's not the line that I was hoping for. Like I said, I really was planning on this and then snag, snagging this pawn. But, you know, sometimes that happens. You overlook things. And so got to make the best of, of the situation. So that's what we'll do. We'll just play bishop e3 and then go for this big trade of stuff. Okay, they do play queen e4. All right, so let's play bishop e3. And I'm getting ready for some, some trades here. Of course, if black doesn't do that, then I'll probably just attack the queen. But I am expecting this. Bishop g4. Okay, was not expecting that move. But now maybe we can take advantage of this and attack the queen. So there's knight c3. Or we could even play d5 and get the pawns pushed like I wanted to and then attack the queen. That might be an idea as well. I kind of do like that. But I really didn't want to allow black to take here. Now I have the option to chase that knight away. What if it goes to b4 though? It's going to be an annoying threat. So we have to at least plan for that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's knight to a3. Not really what I want to do. So this is, a, this is already a tricky position. It's already kind of a tricky position. So maybe we chase the queen away first, and then we follow it up with d5. That might be the, the more appropriate way to do it. There is bishop b4, but... Hmm. Ah, uh, but if bishop b4, then the knight can't go there. So I think maybe we play knight c3, 
and then we can play d5 because I don't want to play d5 now. Like I mentioned, knight b4 looks like a scary move to me. So yeah, let's do that. And of course, if the bishop takes, I think we just take, take, take. Should be fine. Let's play knight c3. If I didn't make a mistake. It's a tricky position though. All right, so queen to f5, our opponent retreats the queen. And now I think maybe d5 is a good a good move. There's still knight to b4, but now we can bring our rook over to deal with that threat if we want. I can also just play like bishop e2, just deal with this pin this way. So I don't have to mess up my pawn structure. Then I could take, and everything's defended. If this happens, we would simply take. That looks fine. What about e4? Would we move our knight somewhere? Hmm. Yeah, we could probably just go back. Okay, so I think these are my two kind of candidate moves. Bishop d3 almost looks good, but there's e4, which is a fork. And I don't believe I want to put myself into a fork right here. So bishop e2, d5 seem to be the moves that are coming to my mind. On d5, I'm expecting like knight b4, and then we can slide our rook over. The only thing I don't like about that is if black wants, they can just force this to happen and really mess up my pawn structure. And I don't love that. I think I would rather play bishop e2. I can allow this. It's not a big deal. And at least my pawns don't get messed up. So let's go with bishop e2. Okay, bishop to b4. Um, let's see. We have the option to simply castle and get out of the pin that way. We could now take this opportunity to push forward and chase the knight away. I'm not sure where the knight would go to. I like the look of that. Yeah, I think um, d5 is good. And we're actually threatening if the knight just simply like moves here. Queen a4, and we could pick up the bishop. So that looks like a pretty pretty good move. Of course, black, if they're smart, they'll take this first and then move the knight. But that's fine, I think. Messes up the pawns a little bit, but not too bad. And that pawn actually helps support the center. And so, yeah, let's, let's actually go with that. We'll play d5. Wow, strong move from our opponent, basically saying, I don't have to move my knight. I can just pin it to your queen. And they can. And, um, hmm. So, yes, very good move, I think. Although I'm start, I'm wondering what happens after queen a4. Because what queen a4 does is gets out of the pin, which renews the threat on the knight, also attacks the bishop. If the knight moves away, we take the bishop. And if the bishop trades and then the knight moves away... We can come down here and take this pawn, and we're going to be attacking Black's king. So it looks to me like queen a4 is a very good move. Let's just verify that nothing else is going to happen. I don't believe so. And so I'm going to play queen to a4. Like I said, primary reason is to get out of the pin to renew this threat on the knight. But secondary thing that's going on is we're putting the threats on these pieces as well. And that, you know, obviously the knight is defending those. So once it moves, we have options here. Wow, knight to d4. What a move by our opponent. So first thing that comes to mind is if we take the bishop, they're going to be forking us. So we can't do that. Um, if we do this, we also kind of have to watch out for this fork. So I think we want to take this knight. Question is which way. Doesn't matter. We take with the knight. And let's say black recaptures. And then we take... Just a little bit concerned. There, there's like potentially some scary stuff happening here with the bishop, queen, rook coming over. I don't love that, honestly. Take with the knight, same kind of deal. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Um. A move. A move by our opponent. So let's think, I mean, sometimes the easiest thing is to castle just to get out of the, the, the fork here. But in this case, that's not what we're going to want to do because of this. And then our king is open over here with the queen and the knight. Don't think we want that. But I, yeah, I do think we have to take the knight, right? I think we have to. Just trying to find if there's like any other moves. I'm not really seeing it. So takes, takes. We take with the knight. What's black probably going to do? Queen to e4. Take this, they take us. That should be okay. Should be okay. I think we do want the knight there though, because we're gonna probably need the extra defense. We take this way. 
trade. It just looks super scary. I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it, but I think we need to capture this way. So I'm going to use my, my instincts here and take the, this way. Opponent's playing some great moves, though. I have to say I'm quite impressed. And we're at that two and a half minute mark. So I'm going to start moving a little faster. Um, there's still a lot of game left, potentially. doesn't really look like the game is about to be over. And so with that in mind, I have to give myself some time to finish the rest of the game. I have to. So, uh, you know, sometimes you make mistakes when you start playing faster like that, but it's something that you just have to do. I'm going to just take that right away. I already calculated it. No reason to sit there and waste time. Very tricky position because this bishop is still pinning the knight. So it gives the queen and, you know, lots of options. There's also the rooks. I have not castled, which is kind of scary. Um, a lot happening. Yeah, pretty, pretty good move. Pretty good move. So I think we take the bishop. Then at least this guy can assist. We're going to lose the knight. That's okay. We could probably castle. And I think we can always come back with the knight. So it looks like we're surviving barely, if I'm not mistaken. So let's take the bishop. I'm assuming, yes, that one. Okay, and now I think we castle. Finally get the king out of out of the danger. We have this defended. That was I mean that was tough. That was a that was a tough position. I'm very impressed with our opponent's tactical abilities for an 800 rated player. Very impressed. They, those were some advanced tactics that they were finding there. So um but I think we've we've kind of simplified. Things are looking Better now, we have our extra pawn. We got our king out of the, the center and should be should be good to go from here. Okay, so we can recapture with the knight. Okay, knight's under attack. I think I'll just move it to g3, block off this. Uh, this is a situation where normally I would probably think through that move a little bit longer, maybe play rookie one instead or bring my queen back instead or something. But in this case, uh, in an effort not to lose on time, I just went with the most obvious logical move. To H5 might be a good move by our opponent. We're going to chase the knight away. I think I'll play rookie one and just tuck the knight back on F1. So it's out of the danger, but it still kind of acts as a defensive piece. And obviously the rook on the open file is going to be good for us. So... On h5, I'll play this. On, let's just say, rook come over, I'll probably still play this just to fight for the open file. And if the knight moves somewhere, I'll probably just take it. Oh, didn't see that one. Wow. Okay, good move by our opponent. So, ooh, and the knight might be coming in here. Wow. Okay. Let's go here to attack these things. Maybe we can take this and get it black's king. This is a threat, but my knight's, you know, blocking, so it gives us some time. So I think we're okay. I'm gonna take black like two moves to chase the knight away or something. You just take that. Okay, so we can take this, and I think I will. We have this idea, and then the king's gonna be forced out. Also take the pawn. I guess black can play knight b6 and stop that though. Now I'm thinking about bringing my rooks over. The rook c1. Looks like a good move. g6. Okay, I'm going to play rook c1. I'm not going to worry about that. It looks like they're trying to shut down my knight and maybe support these pawns pushing forward. But I'm going to go ahead and put the pressure here. I still have this idea. I could have went for that right away and maybe it was better, but I don't like how my rooks are just not doing anything. I really feel like I need them to be more active. So I'm going to go with this one. Okay. So yeah, now I can't really go there because I can't take that. But what I can do. Hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty good move by our opponent. Pretty good move. I guess I'll play b3 just not to lose a pawn. I wanted to go here, but it doesn't actually threaten anything because the knight's defending. So I think black could have just taken my pawn if I went there.
Okay. Solid move. My queen trapped over there? Wow. Okay, I got a move. I'm going to play a3. What I'm trying to do is get my queen out of there. It's trapped right now. I can't actually go anywhere with my queen, which is not a good sign. So I'm going to do this so that I can get it out. Even though I lose a pawn, like, who cares? I have to be able to use my queen. So here we go. Clearly, our opponent is, is pretty good. They're, like, they're not 800. Or at least not in this game. But we did catch up on time, so that's that's a good sign. Definitely be checking this game afterwards. Okay. Let's go back here. I'll be happy to trade queens because um, black is such a good, good tactical player. I think it's going to be safer for us to get the queens off the board. And after all of those crazy tactics, they just blunder a piece. So, a little bit sus. A little bit. Bring our knight over. I'm going to keep an eye out for back rank problems. So, like, if Rook comes here and I do this, that would be a blunder. So, let's go ahead and fix that right away with G3. Just a simple move. Now, I don't have to worry about back rank made for the rest of the game. Okay, we can take and now put our king up here. And very strong 800, super strong 800. Let's take a look at the game um, because yeah, I'm just having a hard time believing. We had about the same accuracy. Our opponent had a brilliant move and great move. And uh, let's take a look, let's take a look. Oh, maybe I should do this so you can actually see. Okay, so yeah, d5 was a good move. We need 4 check. Nothing suspicious here. Nothing suspicious here. Yeah, that wasn't even the best move. Where I started to get suspicious was like... Not here. Right here. Right around here, it was like all of a sudden... Apparently that wasn't the greatest move, but... It was like... Yeah, so I guess they weren't good moves. They just felt like good moves. Okay. Yeah. I mean, really, that wasn't that hard of a... Th this idea right here... Right, let's see, where was it? Right here. Yeah. They weren't great moves. Interesting. Okay, so, I don't know. Still, still felt weird. Like, even though they weren't great moves, something just felt fishy to, to me. But, I don't know. I could be way off. I don't want to accuse people when I don't really know. So, good game by our opponent, regardless whatever happened. They played well, I guess. Let's keep going. Uh, but that was a close game. That, that was a close game. I almost lost, to be quite honest with you guys. Okay. French defense. Um... Okay, I'll show you guys a line that I like to play here. Knight to f6. Well, we'll, we'll just defend our pawn. Maybe we're not going to see French defense. d5 would kind of transpose. Okay, bishop b4. I'm going to play bishop g5, counter pin. Um, on h6, I will have to be willing to give up my bishop. So I'm going into it knowing this. Because if I don't, and I try to, let's just say, go back, then g5... I have to leave, and then bam, the knight comes in. Not a pawn that I want to just give up for, for no compensation, okay? So with that in mind, I will trade it off. And I will simply continue developing. So if you, you know, didn't want to trade a bishop for a knight, you wouldn't want to play bishop g5 in that situation. You want to defend this pawn a different way. Maybe bishop d3 to defend um, would have been the other option. But I was okay with it. And... Um, no worries. Uh, okay. 
I'm thinking about just going bishop e2 and castling, just keeping it simple. Bishop d3 looks like it's losing a pawn, so I don't want to do that. I'm also just kind of considering what happens if I push these pawns forward. So I push here and take. Before I want to open up the center, I probably want to castle, so I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I think I am just going to play bishop to e2. And once my king is out of there, then I'm much more likely to play a move like that and open up the position. All right. So if we castle, the issue is what black's going to take here and then win a pawn. So I think what I'm going to do is take it first and then castle. If I don't lose a pawn, but I'm also in time to get my king out of the center. And now I can start thinking about rook to e1. Now, of course, black's probably going to castle too. Yeah, and they do. So we're not necessarily going to have anything amazing happening there. Um, but it's still an open file. And so I think I'll still go there because rooks belong on open files. Even though the king's not there, still a, still a good move. And I actually just missed this. I could have just taken this pawn. Wasn't paying attention. I'm seeing it now. Could have taken that before. And that would have been a nice move. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just not paying attention, right? Not kind of scanning the board and looking for weaknesses. And... Before, I couldn't do it because I was pinned. But of course, once I castle, it's an option. So mistake, mistake there on my part. So we'll see if black notices that now and, and deals with it. Like with bishop e6. Yeah, good move. Okay, so um, I think what I'm going to do actually is try to relocate this bishop maybe somewhere. Because it's blocking my rook. Uh, it's not really needed here right now since black hasn't done this. Also, I might want to deal with this pin. A lot of times I don't like to just leave pins indefinitely once I've kind of completed the top priorities. So developed, castled, got my rook to the open file. Then I kind of want to look around for things like this, right? And if you can get rid of pins and, and things like that, a lot of times it's a good idea. So I think I will play a3 to either force black to trade or give myself the option to play b4 and get out of the pin so that I can start using my knight again. Um, and really, I mean, really, I already talked about it. Knight d5 was a great move before. I didn't even have to put myself into a pin, so that was just my fault. But since we're here, let's continue on. So b4, all right, so now we can move, you know, use our knight. I might just go here and trade for the bishop. That seems like a, a good idea, primarily because this knight isn't really doing a lot. Like, what's it going to do? I can't go here. I can't take this. I could go here, but why? Like, that seems like a useless place to put my knight. Where else can I go? Back here, over here, over here. Okay, that takes three moves. That's a lot of moves, but I could do that. Or I just simply trade it off, right? So that's kind of what I'm thinking through. Um... The other part of the coin is... Oh, I just noticed. One, two, three. I'm about to lose a pawn. Here we go again, Nelson. I'm just having one of those days, I guess, where I'm just not, like, paying attention very well. Okay. That's actually a, that's actually not a threat that I can easily deal with. Um, Now that I'm looking at it, like, how am I going to defend that? Knight b5? A6. Wasted move. I have to go back, and I still lose the pawn. Um, Bishop b5. Doesn't really do anything. Black's just going to take it. Huh. So already, this is maybe this is a good example. This is a good example of like, what do you do when you're kind of in a bind? I, I think we're kind of in a jam here. So what I like to do is you've checked the basics. Can we defend? No. Can I like block off one of these pieces? No. Uh, I started looking for like outside of the box type of move. So like knight to e5. Looks kind of like a weird move. Like I'm still going to lose a pawn here, but that would put the queen in line with my bishop. And then maybe I can, I don't know, play bishop f3, line up on the queen and we get our pawn back here seems like an idea, although my knight's going to be hanging. So don't really like that. Actually, looking at this now, this a3 before idea seemed like a terrible idea because I've weakened this diagonal. Now I have problems here. All right, so let's keep thinking. What else can we can we do outside of the box? And I take this, play c4 to chase the bishop away, c5 to trap this guy. Does that work? Mm, I don't think so because after c4, black's going to have the option to take here. And when I take back, then they have time to save their bishop or do something, probably just take here. So that doesn't work. But you see what I'm doing? Like I'm looking for, you know, a way out of this 
bad situation. I'm not seeing it though. I'm not. So B5 forced the knight to capture right away. Again, we run into this issue of bam. And it's not looking good for me. So with all that in mind, I think what I'm going to have to do is just give up the fact that, okay, I'm losing the D4 pawn. I can't deal with that. Let me at least figure out what's happening after the capture so I don't run into more problems along this diagonal or potentially the queen and bishop here. I mean, black somehow is a really nice position. So I, I clearly like completely messed this up and really missing that capture was, was the big one, right? So, um... Okay, I think I'm going to play queen d2. It's threatening to bring my rook over to defend. If the knight captures like I think it is, I'm just going to play this rook over anyway. And at least I've sort of put my pieces in a good spot. And if this happens, I can take back. If this happens, I can take back. And at least uh, we'll see if we have a fighting chance to come back from this, this bad position. So queen d2. Um, and, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see if black makes a mistake and lets us back in this game. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the rook over. And at least we have our rooks kind of lined up where, where they want to be. But yeah, it, this just goes to show you like um, one wrong move can really mess you up. Sorry. Going back right here. This this was a huge, huge mistake. And now it's coming back to, to bite me, right? So, okay. Knight takes f3. I'm going to take here. I'm expecting c6. Black has a very solid position. And I don't see much that we can do. We're probably going to have to play some defense, try to hold on, and and just see what happens later in the game. There's really not, if Black plays c6 here, there's really not much I can do. Super solid position for. Okay, they play d4, which um, gives me some hope. Gives me some hope. Question is, how do we want to do this? We can go over here and just try to trade off the bishop. We do have this threat. We can also bring the knight in here, maybe over to c5, kind of mix it up a little bit. We can even play knight to d5, go into an opposite color bishop ending. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's do this and see where the queen's going to go. And then I'm probably going to play knight to c5 to block off the bishop, try to win this pawn. It does mess up my pawns, but I think it's going to be okay because this looks like it's going to be weak at that point. This is also a threat. And, okay, queen, that's maybe a good move. No, but I could still go here and I have the discovered attack. No, it's not a good move. All right, so let's do that. Yeah, I think black is giving us a chance to get back in this game here. All they had to do was play c6, and their position was rock solid. I literally wasn't going to have anything to even attack. But now, we've got some targets. We've got some some options, right? You can see everything now all of a sudden is, is now a target for us. I might be taking this. Let me see where the queen's going to go. I could also throw in this move. But getting rid of that bishop, it's just a, such a well-placed piece. I think trading that off is going to really help us. Also, potentially opens up the rook. But it's going to depend a lot on where black moves the queen to. So right now, I'm just kind of scanning for, like, ideas. Taking here with the knight. Taking here with the bishop. Taking here with the queen. Taking here with either of these pieces. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The queen takes d4 I like, because we still have the threat on these guys. If the rook comes over, I'd be happy to take that. If this happens, probably fine. All right, so yeah, I think, oh, there's this one. I don't really care too much about that, do I? I could throw in this move first, and then take this. No, I'm going to just take it. I'm going to just take it. Yes, I'm, I'm seeing that black can do this, but it just looks like... 
it, it just looks like a dangerous move for black to put the queen there. I, I don't know why. I feel like maybe bishop e4 with tempo. And then maybe bring my queen to the center. The ideas of, of taking here. Something along those lines looks really good to me. So I'm going to allow that if black wants. Okay, they do this. So I already looked at this. Takes, takes, takes. It's a check. It forces the king here. And why is that a big deal? Because bishop to e4 is a pin. So there's the mistake that we were waiting for. I'm just going to double check that I'm not missing some in-between move. I don't think so. Black has no other move to get out of the check. They have to go there. If they take here, I still take a check. Yeah, that's it. So we got we caught a break there. This is why chess is so difficult, because even when you get a, you know an advantage, you make one wrong move, it, you can just lose it. Kind of happened to us, now it kind of happened to our opponent. Okay, so we'll take um, the rook, and now we have a nice material advantage. And our opponent does resign. So, tough game. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I totally wasn't seeing a lot of stuff here. Super obvious move. So just take this, and I missed it. And then I went for the wrong approach of forcing the bishop back to it. Actually, a pretty good square. And I didn't realize that I was going to have no way to defend this pawn. And let's see. I'm curious. What does the engine say from this position the best move was? Okay, obviously, knight takes e5 was really good. And then right here, best move was knight to a4. Interesting. Queen d2 wasn't too bad. Yep, if black plays c6 here, this is what I was worried about. Look at how solid black's position is. Everything is defended. I don't really have anything to attack. If I attack this, you can just go back here, put the rooks in the center. It was going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Um, okay, wow. Let's play one more game. And I think I'll call it um, for this video. I feel like we're missing quite a, quite a bit, so i got to be careful I don't lose here. Okay, Sicilian. Let's just go with our... Normal bishop b5 stuff. Okay, so yeah, they can do this and force you to take it, but I was going to take it anyway, so I kind of feel like it's a wasted move. I'm going to go ahead and castle, get my king out of the center. d5. <laughs> I think I will go ahead and take, and then just strike with d4. And... Basically, I just want to get a pawn out there to control some stuff. And I'm okay kind of trading because it opens up this file where my rook can be activated. Black is not castled. All those things make me think that this is a good plan. I'm thinking about stuff like this. Bring my knight in. Bring the queen over. I'm thinking about just putting the rook there. Just developing the bishop. Lots of ways to approach this position. I don't actually know what's the best move. Um... I could even attack this right away with b3, which is, is not a terrible idea. Because if I recapture, then my rook is involved over here. Um, I'm gonna play rookie one. I'm not like I'm not sure what the best move is for my bishop, for my knights, for my pawns and queens. This rook is basically guaranteed to gonna is gonna go here. So whenever I'm not sure, I'll usually just start with the one that's most likely always gonna go there. Okay. I want to play c3 to create this idea. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I guess I will. Play c3. Let's my queen out so I can play queen a4 check and get out of the pin. And then after that, I can hop my knight in. Looks, looks pr like a pretty good plan. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and play queen a4 check. I want to get out of the pin. Opens up this for my knight. That's kind of the idea. Okay, bishop d7, probably a pretty good move. Um, I don't want to go here. Walks into the bishop. So I think we'll just go back to c2. And we've essentially gotten out of the pin. Now we're ready to start doing other stuff. Okay, what happens if I take it? No, it's not going to be good enough. Knight to d2. Looks pretty solid. Or developing the bishop. Maybe to here. I think I'll play knight to d2. I think I want to get rid of that knight. Black could play f5, but it seems like a risky move to play when your king is still in the center. Only because 
it's like wasting a lot of time with pawn moves. You're not close to castling, and it just, I don't know, it just seemed risky. All right, let's take the bishop. And one thing that I don't love about my position is this pawn right here. It's kind of a weakness. If black were to at some point bring the rook over, could potentially be a weakness. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. Actually, I might take this opportunity to play b4. Because notice on b4, it's not really a weakness because it's defended by a pawn. Right now, it's not, it's only defended by my queen. You don't really want your queen guarding a pawn. That's like not the best use of a, of a major piece like a queen. But I, yeah, I think I will play b4 here. And yes, there's on passant, but then I take back with the pawn and unleashes my rook on this pawn, which seems like a good positional trade for me. Okay, there we go. So now this is a target for me. And I feel like my pawns are much stronger. E either one can really push forward. And I may even actually just do that right now. Play c4. Yeah, and just maybe I go to c5. Okay. Still feeling pretty good. Look at this control. These guys can help each other, so they're not really that weak. Whatever one I need to, I can push forward. And I feel like that series of exchanges really benefited me. Okay. What happens if I play d5? Because remember, black's king's in the center. So this is the stuff that I want to kind of start thinking through. Five. Knight to g5. Knight to e5. Maybe bringing my bishop somewhere. Bishop a5 is a move with tempo. Those are always good to look at. Knight to e5, followed by bishop f4. Lots of ways we could approach this. Um... One thing that I like to do is like try to think about what black is most likely going to do in the next like two moves. And maybe that helps me formulate my plan. So black's probably going to play bishop e7 or bishop d6. Uh, obviously, they can't go here. They can't go here. They can't go here. Okay, so they're probably going to go here and here in castle. So if I know that, what's going to be the best thing for me if that's what they're going to do? One of these two moves in castle. Like if I play d5 and they play, let's just say bishop d6. What am I going to do? Take. Take. Do I like that? Do I not like that? What if I play knight e5 and they go here? What am I going to do? Or castle. Like that. What if I play bishop a5? Where's the queen going to go? Here. And I can hop my knight in with another tempo. That looks pretty good. Where else can the queen go? Here. I can bring my rook over again with a tempo. I'm getting a lot of tempo. That's usually a good sign. Where else can the queen go? Back to c8. It's kind of an awkward square for the queen. I don't feel like it's very effective there. So this move actually, is, as weird as it looks, kind of seems like a pretty good move. It doesn't even give black time to do what they want to do in castle, right? So I'm kind of liking that. I think I will play that. Is it the best move? I don't know. But I see some, you know, logical reasons why it could be very good. Okay, I didn't think about that. That is a, that is a square. I have the option to play queen e4. And looks like it would force, potentially force a queen trade. Takes, takes. Does a queen trade benefit me or hurt me? It's tough to say. It's tough to say. I, I like this because that looks weak. I don't like that black has the bishop pair and I don't. Bishop pair tends to be pretty good at the end of the game. But if I can win this pawn, then it's probably good for me. Um, What else could I play? Maybe now we can play d5 and push forward. Bishop d6 or bishop e7, and I take. Bishop d6, we would have c5. So that looks pretty good. So probably bishop e7 would have to have it happen. Hmm. Mm hmm. So I'm kind of liking this move. I'm, I'm not sure after bishop e7 what to do, though. You could also play knight e5 with the idea of just taking the bishop before black and castle. That's really good, actually, because then the, the king has to go to d7. Black's done for. The issue is my pawn is hanging, but is that really an issue? Because I play rook over here, and I line up with a tactic on the bishop. That looks fantastic upon further investigation. What about bishop d6? A clever move by black. Sacrificing that, going for this. I would be able to escape, though. That looks wild. I wouldn't have to take it, of course, after bishop b6. Ah, I could throw in a move like g3, then take it. Yeah. Okay. So with all that in mind, let's play knight e5. Looks pretty good. And keeping in mind, I know what black's trying to do, probably, bishop e7 and castle. Notice how I was 
attacking the queen. Now I'm attacking here and I'm kind of preventing that from happening. Black does go for this idea of, of the almost checkmate idea. So if I take right away, check, king goes over, check, king comes up. My king's not super safe either. Black would recapture. Both of our kings are kind of in a jam. But g3, in between move, forces the queen to move somewhere. Then we take black doesn't have a great follow-up. I mean, yeah, they could take here, but I don't care. Still could go here and take this. With all that in mind, I think that's what we do. We play g3. Okay. Tricky position, but I think we are um, about to be in a really great position. All right, so now the question is, do I take first or do I bring the rook over first? I don't know if it matters. They both look like they kind of accomplished the same thing. I'll take first. Then it gives me the option to use this rook if I want. Not sure if I do. The only thing I'm thinking of is like, do I need my rook to defend? Like if I go here, the queen moves somewhere. Do I need that to be guarded? Let's just say queen goes here. I really want to play c5. Queen's going to block. Hmm. Unfortunate. Okay, well, I think definitely has to be one of these moves. There's also queen check. Wow, there's so many moves here. Now, I don't want to go queen check because the king just slides over and then there's not going to be a pin. All right, so let's go ahead and... I'm going to use this one only because I'm I'm just worried that for some reason I need that bishop to be defended. I don't see the exact reason, but my instinct is just telling me, like, you better leave that defended. So let's use this rook. Could be wrong. Now we have a pin. Let's pile up on the pin. How do we want to best do that? Queen over. And then maybe bishop here. Ah, but king e7 is probably the move. Ah, uh, no. Hmm. On king e7, I almost have a tactic. I almost have a tactic right now. If the queen takes, I can go here. If the king takes, I can't go there. I could go check, though. If the king goes back, then I could do it. The king would have to go. I'm going to run out of time, unfortunately. Man. Okay. I'm going to run out of time. Um, I'm going to play this move. And what I want to do is double up my rooks, but also prepare for king e7 to sacrifice. Oh, but I don't have this defended. Never mind. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to double up. Yes, I might lose this, but then my rooks can come in. I have a minute left. I unfortunately can't just keep thinking, okay, well, my opponent is clearly trying to flag me, which is not a great strategy. If you have a ton of time, use your time. Don't just try to flag or you're going to blunder like this. And now they just, they had a decent position and not all of a sudden it's just gone. Now they just lost. So don't, don't try to flag people. Uh, if you have a lot of time, use your time to make good moves. Yeah. And I mean, anyway, let's go back. Let's actually look at that game review real quick. That was an interesting position there at the end. Okay, 83 accuracy, not too bad. Let's see what the rating was, 1300 and 1050. All right. So I play like a 1300. Okay. Let's see. What do we have here? Okay. So right here, what was the best move? I'm going to turn on the analysis for a second. So bishop, bishop a5 is coming up as the best move. So that's, that makes me feel pretty good. Second move was queen e4. Interest, ah, it's a pretty nice idea of adding more firepower to the e-file at the same time with tempo attacking the rook. I do like that. But yeah, bishop a4 was the, the best, or bishop a5 was the top move. I don't know why it's showing it as good. It's, the engine says it's the best move. Weird. Anyway. And knight e5, another great move. Okay. d5 was also a good move. And notice how like a lot of these moves revolve around the king was stuck in the center. We had a rook there. We need to do something fast before black can simply play here in castle, right? I think a lot of players would probably just play like a slow move here. Like uh, maybe I'll play h3 
maybe I'll just do this and try to double up my rooks. Maybe I'll just go like this, right? Like, but if you give black two moves to just do this in castle, you don't really have much of an advantage. And so that's kind of what we saw here. Okay, g3 was the great idea. Okay, taking was the best. This rook was, yeah, it was the best move. Okay. Ah, rook, queen a4 check was the best move. So I was afraid of this. Oh, but then you just take it. Ooh. So yeah, so I was, this is a good example. I was on the right track. I just didn't quite put it all together in the correct way. So I was on the track of like, I almost can take this, but I don't have anything defending this. And I forgot to pair that information with queen a4 check. Queen a4 check. And because I was thinking the king would just run. Now I don't have this pin, but I don't need that pin. Now I have this one. So very clever tactics in this position. What was the move here on queen c6? Ah, another very nice tactic. You take with the rook. The queen can't take. The king has to take. And then bam, this rook comes over. If the king moves away, you take the queen for free. The king has to move up. That's checkmate. Ooh, super nice. Super nice. I didn't see that. Okay, very clever. So yeah, but it just goes to show, like, if you can ever get your opponent's king like this in the center with some pieces on open files and ranks around it, there's going to be tactics where you're going to be able to win. You just have to find them, right? So anyway, I hope that helped you guys. And then our opponent just kind of blundered at the end there. But all right, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.